This is totally useless information with Nick and Roy. Listen, laugh, and learn. Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm Roy. This week, we're going to present a very different Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. It's a bittersweet episode, to be honest with you. Uh, recently, we lost a very dear friend of not only us personally, but also a uh, friend of the show. Uh, our very good friend, George Cash, passed away. And uh, George Cash, in the Toronto area and southern Ontario area, as a matter of fact, was known as Mr. Oktoberfest. And uh, he was also part of the Santa Claus Parade for many, many years. And he was also part of the Joey and Gina's Comedy Wedding, which is where I met him. We'll get into that in a little bit later. But, but I first introduced him to Roy because I said to Roy, you know, I know George a long time and we're talking one day. And uh, I, want, I want you to talk to George because George has this incredible story that's, that happened to him, actually happened to him. And what was, what was your first impression, Roy, of, of George when you first met him? And mind you online because you're in Florida and we're in the Toronto area. What was your impression meeting George on Zoom? I, I didn't know what to expect simply because of the fact that I you had told me the story. Right. And then you said basically that you had no you you knew him. Right. And right. I couldn't believe the story to begin with, but you know, but it is a true story. And and then I, I speak with George on the show and George was the type of guy that you spoke to for five minutes and you felt like you knew him for five years. Mm -hmm. or 10 years or a lifetime he just he was so easy to talk to a fun just a great guy that's how i would explain him just a a, a great guy to talk to and what what a what a funny guy you know well uh his uh, his website said it's the george cash experience and it certainly was um, now here's the story. So I'll tell you what the story is all about. So we were, so George and I, we, we spoke, we speak just like I do with Roy. Roy and I have been friends for 40 plus years and we speak at least two, three times a week, if not more. And with, same thing with George. So maybe I'll be off the phone with Roy and then I call George and then we chat and he said to me, you won't believe what happened to me. Well, what happened to you? He says, I had my later hosen stolen. I said, what? And I thought he was making up a story, but he's not one to make up stories. He's a great storyteller, but he's not one that would make up a story. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, someone broke into my house and stole my lederhosen. Now, since he's Mr. October, the king of Oktoberfest, rather, we're like, well, how could you do Oktoberfest without the lederhosen? So today we're going to pay tribute to George Cash by replaying, re-airing the fun interview we had with George. Now, this was part of our news from around the world segment. So we presented it as a news story because it was. It was a breaking and entering story. Was, and yeah. there was a perpetrator, a perp, you know, as this George put it. And he described what happened. And so we, we'd love to um, replay this for you. And if you heard it the first, uh, you know, the first time, you'll hear it again. You'll enjoy it again. If you've never heard this story before, I, it'll be a lot of fun. So bear with us as we pay tribute to the great George Cash as we talk about the Great Later Hosen Heist. This story comes to us from Toronto, Ontario. I know usually we talk about these news from around the world. Florida. Yeah, there's usually <laughs> some crazy people in Florida going up to toll boots naked. Today we bring you to Toronto, Canada, my hometown here where I am, the case of the Later Hosen Heist. Someone broke into a, our next guest's home and stole his Later Hosen. We searched and found the actual person who is the victim of this heinous crime. Nick, continue. So to protect his identity, we're going to just, you know, change his name. We'll call him George. George, welcome to Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. I, I am so glad that you found me and now I'm finding you. So oh, it's wonderful. This is good. We need to talk about this. And, and so that we can protect George, even though we're not on video, we put a bag over George's head. <laughs> that's that's I, I I took it off. Oh, that's fine. I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not to protect your identity. That's how we treat our guests. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, but we searched out and we found George, the later Hosen heist. So, George, tell us in your own words, and, and you know, if you need a moment uh, to grab a, a tissue or something, let us know. But tell us in your own words what happened to you just a few days ago in your home. 
I woke up. I wanted to go to the car. I go to the back steps. All of a sudden, I see my boots are all over the place, and my jacket is not hanging up on the hook. I see another jacket that doesn't belong to me. I shake it. A wallet falls out. Oh. I was, whose wallet is this? I don't know. I go downstairs thinking I left my jacket by the laundry. No, I feel a draft. There's a window that's open in my basement. Pant- George, did you have pants on when you felt the draft? Yeah, yeah, I had my pants on because I was in my PJs. Just I wear- just you know? Yeah, and so I look where the draft's coming from. I have a bookcase, and on top of the bookcase, I had my later hose in and my later hose in type shirts, but they're not there. So oh, Matt, let me ask so- you, George, can I call you George? Yeah, by all means. Okay. Yeah, so, let's call him George. George. So, George, again, we've, we've protected his identity, so nobody knows. He's actually outside the suburb of Toronto, but we won't identify where he is. So, George, if I may, um, why do you have later hosen in your house? Uh, because uh, for many, many years, I've been self-proclaimed as the king of Oktoberfest. Ah. Okay, so to, to, to explain to the guests, that are that the audience that's listening right now, later hosen is a German formal dress of leather shorts normally worn with woolen socks a white shirt and suspenders which have usually an insignia on the um center portion of and it, it's like a zipper pouch yes and, and and they dance a traditional dance called the schublatl correct well close enough close enough right yeah, okay yeah. there you go george is not a lunatic he is well we don't know that for sure but we do know that he is the king of Oktoberfest. The man is a virtual later hosen loony. So let's go, George. So, <laughs> so you realize, so you realize that your later hosen has the been. The man is, stole his later hosen. So, so yes, what, but may I interject here? Yeah, yes. it wasn't the short ones. These were the long ones. Oh, oh, oh that's so easy. you had the full leather pants. Oh yeah. They stole a later hosen. What other items did he steal? They stole socks that went with them. They stole the shirts that went with them. They also stole, are you ready for this? At my back door, my winter toque and a pair of leather gloves. So these people were out for ethnic clothing. I'd say this this falls under a hate crime. (laughs) (laughs) So wait a minute. So he took your, your woolen, your toque, your yeah. long leather leader holes and keep warm, but left his jacket with his wallet in. Oh, no! Not only did he leave his jacket, he also left his jeans, uh, so and he, he also he... left a pair of Doc Martin boots. Right, and that's why I think he stole my later hose in because he lost his jeans. I think he had to go wee wee or something, or maybe he should have gone did the poop business. I don't know, but he took my leather pants. Uh huh. Okay. So this guy literally changed, used your house as a changing room, and did he leave the little number of the items that he took in with him? No, <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. But okay. no, so he puts on your leather pants, yes, your socks, and for those in America, a toque is a hat. Right. He puts <laughs> on your, your he puts on your warm hat, and the, of course the leather pants are a good insulator. And he goes out into the cold, and you don't see this man. He no, had, this all went on. So he was very quiet with the changing thing. Yes. Okay. I was sleeping. No, this is this is wrong. It was in the morning. I was asleep in my bed. Well, thank God. So yeah. going back to your pajama bottoms for a second, what kind of designs do you have on your pajama bottoms? Uh, stripes. Okay. So you, did you call the cops? Did you report this? To the police? Oh, yes. I called the cops Then they showed up. Okay. They took all sorts of information. They took everything that the perpetrator left, the boots, the jeans, uh, the jacket, or set of pictures? keys. Did you take pictures of these items with your phone? I, I Believe it or not, I took a picture of his driver's license only. Oh, very good. Okay. That was good. So, th- so this- you No, know, George, I just want to tell George, something very similar to this happened to me once. I left my clothing at this woman's house when her husband came home. I went out the window and my jeans and my wallet and everything were there. But to go on. Yeah. He came through the bathroom window. So so you call the cops. So now because the guy left his wallet behind, so he's obviously a novice here. Like he's no professional burglar. He left his wallet behind. He may be a professional, Nick. I mean, Well, he left his wallet behind. So did the, the cops find him? 
Well, guess what? The cops did not find him because the next day I get a door, a knock on my door, yeah. and I look at who's outside, and then I look at the face. I go, I like know that German, face. It looked like a German immigrant. The guy was no, no, it, no, it wasn't. No, no, seriously. I'm looking at this face, and I even mention his name, and I'm going, it's you. You Wait, thought he was asked for a suit? He came back for his wallet. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. He came back. So the guy who, who stole your later hosen and your boots and your woolen socks and your tube came back to your house? Yes, and the, the next George, day in the evening, in oh, asking, asking for his wallet. Oh, wow. Here in Florida, George, we have guns. Everyone has a gun in their home. So this man would have been laying had a in baseball a of later hosen. Yeah, yeah, he... George, what did you do, George? No, so the guy knocks on the door. What do you do? I just said, well, I, in my language, I can't repeat because it was, you know, boom, boom, boom. Right, and yeah. so then he said, I said, what do you mean your wallet? Uh, how do you know it's here? He had a tracking device in his wallet. One of those those, those new fantastic things, you know, yeah. that yeah. you can find out wherever it is, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Had you yeah. put one of those in your later hose and we wouldn't have a problem. That's well, right. that's yeah. true. But I didn't even know those existed. So let me here's ask the you... best part. Yeah. I said, go to the police station. The cop gave me a receipt for the stuff they took as evidence. Good. His stuff. Yeah, always got a receipt. And I said, go to the police station. Okay, fine. That was it. I went to bed. Boom. That was it for tonight. We'll be back with more of the story of the later Hosen heist with George Cash as we pay tribute on Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. We continue now with more of the story of the great later Hosen heist as we pay tribute to George Cash on Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. There's another part of the story. The perpetrator, I love calling him the perpetrator. You're going to, you're very up. good. George, George good. can, we, can like we call you yes. George? Can we call you George? Okay. Yes. You can say perp. You can say perp. We understand what you mean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, we're both this lawyers, part is. George, we're both lawyers, but yeah. go ahead. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, hey, we listen. actually play them on the radio, but go ahead. Okay. I love it. I love yeah. it. But here's the best part. Yeah. The next morning, I guess what? Another bing, bing on my doorbell. It's I open the door. Pardon? It's him again? It's him again. No. What do you want? What do you want? Like you, 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 you No. China or something? Hang on a second. Here's the best part. He said, hello, excuse me, but I'm the guy that was in your house, mm -hmm. says he. So he confessed. Yeah. Hmm. And the best part is he has a big bag with him. And guess what's in the bag? Your later hose. My later hose. Wow. The socks. Was there a dry cleaning thing attached to it? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. We're going to get there. So did okay. you ask him why he came into your house? Did he, did he, was he like stalking you? Does, why, how did he know that you had later hose in your house? I don't think he knew. I think by accident he fell into my house because I was kind of uh, thinking that I locked my back door properly, but I didn't. Uh. Wow. So when when he came to my door, I said, "Could you go around the back of the house and show me how you got in?" So you asked him to recreate how he got into your house. the crime scene. Yes, the I wanted to be a cop. Bring you a pretzel and a beer. So go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't because I don't think I don't think he knew what the later hosen was all about. Yeah, no. But no. they were because you know what? I asked him, "Why did you take them?" He said, "Because I forgot where my pants were." And I asked him if he was in, did he imbibe in all kinds of stuff the night before? And yes. And he said uh, he was at a friend's house and he can't really remember much. He, he drank too much. I said, what else did you do? He can't remember. Well, he well did, you, did you tell him that that's what you usually did when you wore the later hosen? <laughs> well, I, no, I, I wouldn't admit to that because then it would be not a very nice thing because he would think that he was in good company. So he and left. George, where did you learn how to dance in the in later hose? Uh, I, 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 I've never done that because if you dance with the later hose and then you got to slap yourself. 
Yes. And yeah. I tried that a couple of times, and instead of hitting the head, I, I went down below, and it hurt. Mm. I've actually paid girls to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, George, so, so uh, as we wrap up here on Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy, we're talking about, here's a story from news from around the world. We found the victim of the was late... Was he young, George? Was he a young guy? How old was he? Yeah. yeah. He was a young guy. Young guy. Yeah. Okay, young man. Yeah, go back to YMCA. So he left his a young friend. person. We young, have to say you don't know what his actual what he what he identifies as. Okay, so young person. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't quite fit in the song, but it's okay. So he had he had drinks at his friend's house. He left his friend's house without pants. He was looking for pants. Found your door unopened. So you have no. He had pants, Nick. He just he just probably thought he was at home and took his clothes off in George's house. And then realized he doesn't have his clothes, found George's later hosen, popped that on, went outside looking for an Oktoberfest, didn't find it, came back the next day, returned the stuff because he wanted to get his stuff back. Did you press charges, George? You know something? By the way, Nick, if I may be so bold, yeah, you can call uh, me Nick. Roy is, uh, you know, he's a very smart man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I try to tell Nick this all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> It must be the heat from Florida. Yeah, but yeah, no, yeah. It, it bakes your brain. <laughs> so, so George, as, as we leave here on Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy, do you have any advice to our audience uh, so that none of this happens to their to their home, as it were? I'll tell you what you do, George. You better get a safe and put all your ethnic clothing in a safe. But the, no, no, because I, I have a lot of ethnic clothing. But, okay, you want some advice from the guy that got any, purple? Any from Victoria's Secret, George. Yeah. <laughs> Your secret's okay, fine with okay. us. Can we call you George? Every, every night, every night, that goes for you, Roy, and for Nick. Trust okay. me. You have to trust me. Always make sure you walk around your house or apartment checking all the doors that they should be locked. Okay. This is good advice for everyone listening. George is, is a man who was violated. Right. They stole his clothes. His later hosen. And... Here's the other moral to this story, okay? Well, first of all, you know it's a Canadian robbery story because the guy came back and brought back the stuff he stole. Yeah, and apolo did he apologize at least, George? Oh, yes. Oh, he yeah. just said, but I loved it because he came back to apologize and he used the word, I'm sorry for the incident. Incident. Uh -huh. yeah, there you go. So he was fully aware of what he had done then. If he and called George, it George, you, you seem like a really nice guy, so you did not have him incarcerated, correct? No. No. Okay. George okay. is a nice guy. George, George. is a humanitarian. Yeah. This yeah. is why they call him the king of the October Oktoberfest. So if you're in the uh, Kitchener area, which is just outside of Toronto, in the month of October, check out mm -hmm. George. We'll call him George. And, do you and still do it, George? You do it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you're going to be famous now. Yeah. So check it out. You come to, uh, to Kitchener. You come to the Toronto area. Uh, do you have a website, George? Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, yes. Okay, so you know what we'll do? We'll put a link on our website so that you don't reveal your true identity. So we want to thank you very much for joining us. And so that you know, guests of Total Useless Information, Nick and Roy, accommodations are provided by the guest because we have no budget. <laughs> <laughs> so In other words, you're going to send somebody else to my house? Yes. Don't listen. You think George felt violated when they stole his clothes? Could you imagine how he felt when we called him? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? It's okay. Hey, listen. Yeah. Listen, Nick and Roy, totally useless information. Yes. Uh, I think it's a fantastic thing you guys are doing. And it's so nice that I, I should uh, talk to you this way because uh, I'm sort of computer illiterate, you know. It's okay. Oh. I, I know it took it took uh, George about thirty five tries to get on the Zoom meeting. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, I'm joking. Right, right. It was thirty six tries. <laughs> 36. <laughs> Who's counting? That's right. Well, uh, again, we'll call him George. You know the yeah. the uh, the victim of this uh, later hose and heist. We heinous, thank you. Heinous crime. It was uh, what? Sorry. It's a heinous crime. It's a heinous crime. It's a later hose and heinous heist. So I think we should say Alfita Zane. Alfita Zane. Thanks, Great George. Great meeting you, George. Take care. My pleasure. Bye. Talk, I'm going to go to do leave now. Leave. Okay, yeah, bye. Leave. Bye. Bye-bye. We got such a response from this show. I can't even tell you. We just kept getting responses. And people, you know, because we, we air the show once a week, but people go to nickandroy.com and they listen to shows, you know, previous shows that you can listen to the entire library of shows at nickandroy.com. Right. 
but people were listening to this show and we got such an overwhelming response that months and months later we decide to catch up again <laughs> with george and discuss what's been happening in reference to this particular crime of course, we'll play that in the next segment. But uh, just to give you a little glimpse of uh, what was written beautifully in his obituary, George Cash will be remembered by so many for his incredible heart and beautiful soul. He was a fantastic man through and through, and George spent many years putting smiles and faces through his true passion as Mr. Oktoberfest and, of course, Santa and the Santa Claus Parade for many years. George's talents and charisma have taken him around the world where a chance of on your head always followed. Uh, George was made famous, of course, of uh, drinking beer upside down. Uh, George Cash has left the stage for the last time, and he can now finally take a break. But uh, we're replaying some of the moments on our show. Uh, but uh, those of you who are asking in place of gifts or flowers, Please donate to Lissard and Innisfree Hospice. That's L I S A A R D and I N N I S F R E E. Lissard and Innisfree Hospice or the Variety Club of Ontario. You're listening to a very special, totally useless information with Nick and Roy as we pay tribute to George Cash. Around and firm and fully packed, it was hanging on the rack. Someone snuck in through the back. They ripped off the kishka. Who stole the kishka? Who stole the kishka? Who stole the kishka from the butcher shop? Hey, who stole the kishka? Who stole the kishka? Who stole the kishka? Someone called a cop. Welcome back to a very special episode of Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy as we pay tribute to George Cash. Now, we're about to replay an interview we did with George a few months after the great later Hosen heist. He did get his later Hosen back, of course. And we also asked him about Oktoberfest and how he got started and, of course, the history of Oktoberfest and the many hats. Here now is George Cash as our guest on Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy as he prepares for Oktoberfest. Welcome, bienvenue, benvenuto, buzu. Welcome to Customs and Traditions with Nick and Roy. Wow. <laughs> so we are bringing back a, uh, a guest, and actually he was a victim, and we bring him back for a follow-up interview. He was a victim of a heinous crime. He was a victim of the later Hosen heist, if you remember which, a few weeks ago. Which, by the way, is one of our most listened to episodes. It so is. if you haven't heard it, go back and listen to it. Well, we're, the reason why we're bringing back the victim of the later Hosen heist is because he has his later Hosen back. He is dubbed the king of Oktoberfest, George. Nick, yes. he's not just that. I call him the Duke of Detectives. The Prince of Policing, the King of the Oktoberfest, George Mr. Oktoberfest. Wow. <laughs> Welcome, George. Boy, what an introduction. Bo, 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 boy. I'm so impressed. What, can we call you George? Because I know we changed oh, By all means. Okay. That's what my mommy called I, me. I would like to open up, George. You did get your later hosen back? First of all, yeah, I did get my later hosen back a little bit on the dirty side. I had to get them cleaned, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um explain to us what goes on in Oktoberfest because you have been how many years have you been part of Oktoberfest? Let's go back from 1968. Wow. Wow. Do the math. Do the math. That's Nick's department. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, if, in 19... you've been doing it at least five years. <laughs> yeah, seventy-four, no, nineteen sixty-eight. Yeah, yeah. What what got you involved in Oktoberfest? Like, how did you start all that? Way back when, when I had what they called a legitimate kosher type job, if you were to use that expression, it was a uh, I was a business type man, and someone said, "Hey, you own some drumsticks and a drum." I said, "Yes, I need somebody to fill in." Because the guy that I use as a drummer, and this was a German guy that had a little band. He said, the guy hated polkas. I said, so I, I was born with polkas up my you-know-what. 
So yeah. anyway, I went there, and that was in uh, Kitchener, of course, if I can mention that. And I said, this is craziness. This is fun. This is nuts. George, I, I listened to that episode that you were on with us. And I'm, I'm. A lot of people wrote in to us, and they said, "This poor guy, somebody broke in his house and stole this man's leather clothing for a German festival." <laughs> and we literally had to send people information to say, "Yes, that is the truth. We didn't make it up." And and so people are interested to hear from you, George. I'm glad that we have you back on to clear any of these things up. And I'm and I'm glad the pants. My I call them pants, but my later hosen fit very well. Good. And they look good. And as a matter of fact, you know, now that you're mentioning it, I think wearing them, I should try some twerking with them. You should <laughs> definitely, but don't twerk too much because that leather can chafe. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> exactly. You might so, want to you may start a fire or something. <laughs> so, uh, for those of you who don't know the story, so basically, someone broke into uh, uh, George, allegedly George's house, and uh, they stole a bunch of things, including his later hose. And now. Being Mr. Oktoberfest, you need the lederhosen. So what is the significance of the lederhosen as part of a costume that you have? What is the significance of a lederhosen? Oh, well, first of all, they're made out of leather. And they started way back when, when to have a pair of lederhosen, men, you could wear those forever. You didn't have to buy every year or something because they last forever. My lederhosen. That, that's what the cow thought. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what the cow thought until somebody said, hey, we can use your uh, covering. Yeah. And so my later hose, and believe it or not, that's why it was sentimental, not just because of the leather. I bought them, believe it or not, they came from Germany in 1975. Oh. Wow. So wow. you bought these, you have these, these are now like a, a, an heirloom for you. Yes. Do you right. leave the fly open to get the heirloom? No, 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 you, no, 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 because that, yeah, but I, I, so you're familiar with the little flip flap. Yes. Let me tell you, I had a pair of later hosen as a kid, George. I don't know if you remember me telling you that. My grandmother was from Bavaria, and she bought me a pair of later hosen. So from the age of, I don't I don't remember, but from maybe five to eight, I was able to wear these later hosen, you know? And uh, so we would go to the Oktoberfests or some German festivals, the Schwaben festivals, and I would dress in lederhosen, you know? So, we so did you ever have to, if I may ask you a question then, uh, mm -hmm. did, did you over, when you had to go to the bathroom to go have a wee, did you drop the flap? Well, I was five, so most of the time I just peed my pants. <laughs> <laughs> so do we have pictures of you in later hosen? I'm still Cause... doing it sometimes, George, yeah. now, you know? <laughs> yeah, whether you're five or 65, it's the same result. George, so you got them back. Yes. The yes. guy brings them back to you. You have them clean. Do you have them in a safer spot now, not to give away where they are in your household? You don't want to do that. Right. But no, no. If, if somebody wanted to break into my house, go looking for my later hosen, they would have a problem ah. because I have cameras everywhere now. Ah. Oh, oh so you, yeah. So you did, you did yeah. put, put together some sort of um, alarm type system now to, yes. so that you will be aware if somebody comes in to try to get them. And I have, I have a dog. Oh, so now you even got a dog. Is it a German yeah. shepherd, I hope? A German no. shepherd? No, <laughs> no, German. but no, it's, an English bulldog. Dachshund? Oh, an English bulldog. So you're mocking the English. Right. <laughs> yeah, and so are we on totally useless information with Nick in and fact, Roy. Nick, his English dog has a cigar in his mouth, and he says, never, never, never. <laughs> exactly. We'll have to train him for that. So you, you call him Churchill, the dog. <laughs> no. No. Are you ready for this? Yes. Sir Lewis Hamilton. Oh, oh, very dignified. Wow. <laughs> does, does he wear does he wear a powdered wig? Powdered wig? No. No. So, no, so no, you no. have a 24-hour surveillance on closed circuit television. So this is not available anywhere. This is only on closed circuit, 24-hour surveillance of your later hosen. We'll call it the later hosen cam. Can we call it the later hosen cam? Oh, that would be fantastic. And I think I'm gonna give you a good idea, George. Maybe people can can write in and, and boost this up. But I think George should start a website called Guard My Lederhosen, where people can <laughs> come onto your website and just watch what's going on in your house. You've right, got to right. be very careful how you walk around, George. That's right. But uh, they're going to see the bulldog there and Sir Sir Lancelot and, you know. Sir <laughs> Lancelot. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. And, and that'll also have a monthly fee attached to it. 
Oh, de- well, it would have to because Roy wants a monthly fee just to show his old later hose when he was a little guy. Yeah, I'd watch that if I put that later hose in. First off, I probably couldn't get it past my calf. <laughs> <laughs> he could wear it as a wristband. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. Hey, mine thing. had the little uh, coin pocket on the suspenders with the Edelweiss made out of ivory. Ooh. Oh, yeah. This was some big deal Bavarian later hose. It was. And I had the green socks with the black shoe bottle shoes to do the, the dance. Well, you know what? If I may interject, I would love to see somehow. Roy doing the shoe, the little shoe plotters, slappy, slappy, baggy, baggy stuff. Yeah. So I will do the lederhosen thing. If I can't find the lederhosen, I'll probably have to wear some of my latex clothing. There. <laughs> yes. Another for nineteen ninety five a month. So, no, I don't know if you know this, George, but I, I, because I wanted to be prepared because you know, I, to be honest with you. I get a little intimidated when I interview you because you are of such high regard. Apparently, the first Oktoberfest was held to honor the marriage of Prince Ludwig and Therese of Saxe Hilden Hilberg Hausen. That's how prepared he is. That's George. right. In 1810. <laughs> so it was a wedding party. And that wedding oh. party eventually ended with a horse party. They all went horseback riding. Now, Did you know this, George? I guess, yeah, we have bits and pieces because, after all, I mean, I have to find a where it all started. That's true. That's right. Now, I Einstein, admit, Albert Einstein, he was a smart guy. He once yeah. worked there as an electrician in 1896, and he even helped out uh, to set up one of the tents because there are many tents in this uh, Oktoberfest uh, party, of course. You're listening to a very special Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy as we pay tribute to George Cash. Welcome back to a very special episode of Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy as we pay tribute to George Cash. And, you know, the thing is, there was a, a lady, uh, a Fraulein, that was carrying this year, apparently, uh, 18 one liter steins filled with beer. She picked up at a table, pushed them close together, and it brought them towards her chest and walked a certain distance, and they carried 18. Could you think you could do that? Do you wear a hat or anything? What else is part of your costume with the lederhosen? Well, uh, the, the the socks and then the lederhosen. See, I have the long lederhosen, the bundles, and they come down to the knees. Okay. I also have the shorts like like Roy would have worn as a kid. Right. The little ones with the flop flop, the flip flop. Yeah, I do have the flip flop. That's my door. That's the that's I call that the pee pee door. The pee pee yes. door, yeah. Yes. And then of course, uh then uh did, I decided this year we're going to wear different type shirts instead of traditional uh, blue and white uh, diamond shaped uh, Bavarian style shirts. We're going with golf shirts that are right off the wall, just to be different. That would mm. be different. Now, uh, the reason why I ask about hats is because uh, in in part of my research, the fine research that I did to be prepared for your show, as you're listening to totally useless information with Nick and Roy. And I know uh, the hat, Nick. It's the felt hat. That's right, and it felt good. Uh, the more, the more apparently the type of hat that you wore, right? It was um, it was determined how wealthy you were. So the more tufts of goat that you had on your hat, the wealthier you were considered to be. So they used these tufts of goat way back Which when. Which is pretty much goat poop. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> that's right. So you might be rich, but the poor goat because he has no tufts. Yeah, exactly. Yet. Exactly. exactly. So um, so let, you know, uh, Nick. Again, yeah. The 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 hats we usually made out of almost like a green felt and they had the brims would have had i guess the goat hair or whatever the hell it was yeah and then again the edelweiss plays in because you'd have a sprick of that edelweiss which is a flower that you can only get way way up where nothing else grows the edelweiss grows in the alps and they you know something gentlemen gentlemen i am so impressed with the fact that roy is not only filled with useless information he seems to come out with useful information. That's I am right. so impressed. And you know what? We, it, first, first of all, we apologize. And number two, we have a sound for that. 
whenever there's useful information, we, we, <laughs> sorry, we play it's a little, that. Yeah. It's a little dusty. I haven't used it in a while. So I had the yeah, dust. George, around. George brings it out of me, I think, Nick. Yeah, you know, he does. I'll tell you the truth. I think it's just that countryman type thing, you know? So what other instruments do you have in your ensemble? Because you're a drummer. So what other instruments? Well, do you I usually work as a quartet with trumpet, saxophone, flute, and keyboard slash accordion and drums, which means four, three musicians and a drummer. Wow. So me and George have a lot in common. We both have the German thing going. We're both musicians and performers. Mm -hmm. And we both like to, on the weekends, dress up in um, uh, furry costumes. Is that true, George? <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I have to think about that. I definitely have to think about that. But, you know, if when I go to do Oktoberfest, I wear my outfit. It doesn't matter where I am. So wait a minute. So you go dressed in your later hose. You don't go into a dressing room, and no, and of course you not. go. You don't wear later hose and then go hide. No, come on, Nick. Oh well, I don't know. Now, Nick, you have the opportunity to go there. I am not in Canada. You are, so yeah. you could go to Oktoberfest, which I would hope that there's a possibility that you may be able to go this year with recording device and get a little bit of the whole thing that's going well, on. Well, you know, because it is totally useless information, then I would have to get from Nick some useful information, yeah. such as sizing, height, weight, waist, length, and all that usual stuff, and I will see how I could make an arrangement to see that Nick ends up getting a nice pair of lederhosen that he will have to wear during the month to the end of October, no matter where he is and whatever day it is. Right. <laughs> see, yeah. see, this is this is George is is really, he's the man. Yeah, I, I have to he's say he's the that. king. He's the king of uh, yeah. Oktoberfest. Yeah. There's no doubt. Yeah, even though like England has a new king, Canada has a new king. He, George has always been the king of Oktoberfest. I, I was going to say the uh, the king of England. He's like new, so he hasn't proven himself. George since '68. Yeah. I mean, come on. George so, is like, you know. so George, uh, I do have a sample of you playing at Oktoberfest. Around and firm and fully packed, it was hanging on the rack. Someone snuck in through the back. They ripped off the kishka. Who stole the kishka? Who stole the kishka? Who stole the kishka from the butcher shop? Hey, who stole the kishka? Who stole the kishka? Who stole the kishka? Someone called a cop. Right, right, super. <laughs> there you go. Now, there's, 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 who stole the later hosen this year? That's right. Well, we're going to change it to who stole the later hosen. Right now, who we stole have the later hosen. Who's georgecash.net? That's G E U O R G E K A S H, georgecash.net. That's your website. You go there, find out all kinds of information. If you can't make it to, to Canada, you can certainly. Check out the audio and some video there as well. But I will try and to go down. And his password is Eins, zwei, drei, super. Right. <laughs> try to spell that one. George, we can't thank you enough for joining us once again on Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. Listen, guys, have fun. And I keep listening to find out if I can get little snippets of useful information. And there's the odd one that sneaks in. Yeah. But the useless information, that's phenomenal. Yeah. we're If you're the king of Oktoberfest, we're the kings of useless information. Well, danke schön, George, und auf Wiedersehen. Yeah, well, danke schön, and a uh, ciao, and grazie, and uh, eins, zwei, drei, vier. Yeah, danke schön, <laughs> and I'll have a schnitzel. It's, it's a cliche to say what I'm about to say, but not too, there's not too many people in this world that you could say this about. But honestly and truly, the world's a better place because of George Cash. Anybody that knew this man would tell you that. And I think that's the perfect, perfect way to describe him. And what a perfect life to lead when so many people feel that way about you. Exactly. And it didn't matter how he um, he touched everyone, and he did. And, uh, I mean, some of the inside jokes where um, I had the good fortune of, of, of visiting. Actually, my wife and I went to visit George. Uh, actually, the day before he did pass on, and we had the good fortune of meeting some of his other members of his family, and we gathered around, and, and uh, he was still with us, but uh, he was able to hear us at least. And uh, and we were just sharing stories, and it didn't matter whether you were related to him or some business dealings. 
And there was like he was a great collector of things. Now he wasn't a hoarder. He was a collective memorabilia, and he did a lot of stuff. He was in TV shows. He was in movies. He was in many commercials. He was involved in so many festivals and events around Southern Ontario and and uh, in Manitoba as well. Like he was in a couple of movies. Like he did it all, and he had basically memorabilia memorabilia of every single one of the things that he had done. Um, and so. There were a lot of things, and then everyone just said, well, George used to tell us, you know, how did you get this? He would all often tell them, don't ask. <laughs> <You know>? mm-hmm. <laughs> that was the thing. And so no matter what it was, George, how did you go, How did you wind up with uh, Don't ask. Yeah, we lost someone. I, I, will, I do miss him. But you know what? I thought we would take this time, and we thank you for listening to us and paying tribute to a very special person that may have left us, may have you know exited stage left, but you know what? George Cash will live with us for many, many years to come because of what you said, Roy, because he made it a point that you had a great time. It was truly the George Cash experience. It will be missed. Tiki-taka, tiki-taka. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Tiki-taka, tiki-taka. Ooh.